In the previous video, we installed TensorFlow. In this video, we'll learn how to perform simple computations. First, we're going to take a look at the tensor object type. Then, we'll look at the graph understanding of TensorFlow to define computations. Finally, we'll run the graphs with sessions, showing how to substitute intermediate values. First, open up the simple.py code file included with this video. You're going to want to be copying and pasting lines from that file or retyping it yourself. This will be the standard method for most of this course. Now, let's import TensorFlow as TF. This is just a convenient way to refer to it in Python. You'll want to hold your constant numbers in tf.constant calls. For example, let's do a equals tf.constant1 and b equals tf.constant2. Of course, you can add and multiply these to get other values c and d. TensorFlow numbers are stored in tensors, a fancy term for multidimensional arrays. If you pass TensorFlow a Python list, it does the right thing and converts it to an appropriately dimensioned tensor. Here, you can see that happening. V1 is a simple vector, a one-dimensional tensor, passed as a Python list of 1, 2. The dots here just force Python to store the number as decimal values rather than integers, and you could probably do without them. V2 is another Python list, 3, 4. M is a two-dimensional matrix made from a list of lists in Python, creating a two-dimensional tensor in TensorFlow. N is also a two-dimensional matrix. Note that this one actually has multiple rows in it. And finally, K is a true tensor, containing three dimensions. Note that the final dimension contains just one entry, a single 2x2 two two box. Don't worry if this terminology is a bit confusing. Whenever you see a strange new variable, you can jump back to this point to understand what it might be. You can also do simple things like add tensors together. Or you can multiply them element-wise, so each common position is multiplied together. For true matrix multiplication, however, you need to use tf.matemol, passing in your two tensors as arguments. Everything so far has just specified the TensorFlow graph. We haven't yet computed anything. To do that, we start a session in which the computations take place. Doing sesh.run nn evaluates the given expression and returns an array. Let's take a look at that just for a second. And you see we get our output here. When you're done using your session, it's good to close it just like you would a file handle. For interactive work, we can use tf.interactiveSession and then simply call m2.eval to get the value of node m2. And here we see that value. Not all our numbers are constant. To update weights in a neural network, say, we need to use tf.variable to create the appropriate object. Note that we also have to initialize all such variables with a special call tf.initializeAllVariables, and then run that with sesh.run. This is to actually put a value into that variable. In this case, it will stuff a zero value into the w variable. Let's just verify that w has that value. You can see that it's zero on the left here. Let's see what happens when you add a to it. Recall that a is one, so you get the expected value of 1 here. And let's add a again just to make sure that we can increment and it's truly a variable. Now we see that w is holding 2 as we've incremented it twice with a. You can return or supply arbitrary nodes when doing a TensorFlow computation. Let's define a new node but also return another node at the same time in a fetch call. First we define e. Let's take a look at what E starts as. And you can see E is just 4. Now let's learn how you can pass in multiple nodes, E and D, to return multiple values from a sesh.run call. And you can see our two values here on the left, E being 4 and D being 2. 
Now, suppose we want to use a different intermediate value, say, for debugging purposes. We can use feedDict to supply a custom value for a node anywhere in our computation when returning a value. Let's do that now with d equals 4 instead of 2. And you can see our result has changed, now it's 6. In this video, we learned how to do core computations with TensorFlow tensors. In the next video, we'll look at a logistic regression model.